Yeah. All right. We, yes, we are live. Yeah. Uh, hello. Today is year 2017, June 10th, and I have with me Christine, Johannes, Karen, Elila, Selesh, Sure, and, and hi, Richard. I have with me Dr. Richard Allen Miller. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you for setting up faster internet. Now we have a better connection. Hopefully. And, uh, how, how are you today? Well, how is how are the moods over there? Yes, I, I'm good. We what did we do yesterday? I forgot already. <laughs> uh, took a boat ride. What's that? Took a boat ride. Oh yeah, we went down the Rogue River in um, in a jet boat and had a destination resort where we had ribs and things, and then we came back and he did wheelies in the big 400 horse <laughs> jet boat. And everybody got wet. Uh, it was it was very cool. Yesterday it was just starting to get overcast. It was cloudy and overcast with the sun coming through. Today it's overcast and a little bit of sun has peaked out. Hummingbirds are out. Birds are out. I'm good. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, we are we are live now. We already have four viewers. And to join us, uh, anyone can join through Hukala dot. Org. There, you just click there and join. H u c o l o dot org. Yeah, that's what I'm good at. Is I I do best when I don't talk as much as respond to your needs. Wonderful. I, okay. uh, so we we wanted to to speak today about spiritual matters and okay. the key message which we get from all spiritual sources and alien sources is ascension that humanity is going through ascension and there is some transformation of the humanity into a new uh, species um, can you talk about that yes i can um there are different levels of love we can start with love spirituality is not what you do but how you do it the quality in which you approach this thing yes you had a question what happened? Uh, Ted Marr came on. No, who is this? What's going on? How come I have no volume? Because nobody's talking. He came on and like moved in front of the camera. Oh, there oh, you're, there you are. Uh, I had no sound, so I didn't know what was going on. Some other person or a, 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 a icon came up, and I didn't understand that. I'm not hearing you. I needed to close the window to remove the noise, so I closed the window, and then I'm ah! back. You're good. We oh, and you want to just talk? I see. I'm not okay. So, different qualities of love. Yes. Okay. So, love in Greek, and we'll start with the Greek forms because that's important. Was eros, philo, agape, and telema or thelema, the love of will, your purpose. Um, the love of your purpose is supposed to supersede any other form of love why you are here that's in magic now we're going to talk about that in a minute now the next hierarchy of love is what the quaker called joy when you get into a motion of joy everything is like you're in flow that's the that's the thing called flow when you're in joy you're in flow then you go to the appendishads and the highest forms are the so-called jhanta states or bliss states of consciousness and so you have love joy bliss and in bliss uh in the appendishads they have broken them into eight levels of cosmic consciousness the candle look at you burning at both ends that's what i'm talking about man the metaphor of oh i see you're melting it i thought you were going to burn your candle at both ends and i was going to say yeah that's the way that works <laughs> uh, i just wanted to i wanted to ask wh where are you have you been at which different levels what did you experience personally i uh i uh am in all levels at one moment that has to do with the sacred and the profane and the relationship to yourself at that given instant in time. Um, and you're constantly in and out of it because we're all of us unruly 
and believe that consciousness is awake, and that is not true. <laughs> there are actual dream states that have more reality or content. Uh, that would be Stephen Kaplan Williams and the Senoi, Jungian Senoi Dream Manual. And so, yeah, me too. I know that song. I use uh, the, the physics way of doing it, where I, the oh, young, fast man's form of... Uh, yeah. Super. Uh, I invite the audience with the questions. We have um, we have uh, an opportunity to ask questions and introduce topics. So the topic is ascension and love. Yeah, and she says, "I feel that is true." Well, yes, we all of us relate to one of the five senses: feel, clear, clear ascension, clear audience. You hear it? Oh, I hear that, or I see that clairvoyance. Uh, we always relate to one of our five senses, but in fact, there are more senses going on that have not yet in this epoch been described. The Greek, for example, their hard sciences were the philosophy of Plato and uh, uh, Pythagoras and uh, Socrates and these ideas of, of archetype and metaphor dealing with stories of divine comedy and divine tragedy, the yin and yang of the cavitation ball we all of us enjoy. Uh, that's why we have two brains. Uh, we have a cavitation process in the way we store memory that gives us a sense of time. That is Aristotle, others that said it is a duration of consciousness. And that's Robert Ornstein, if you'd like to read him also. Now, I know that I don't understand this all right at the moment. I am trying to uh, sort things out as a satsangi. I was initiated by Sharon Singh. I have been uh, meditating and trying to train my mind since the mid-70s. Uh, I'm not hanging closely there yet. I'm terrible. I'm all over the place. Uh, but I'm circular, and I will come in on that. So joy is when you are in, how do they put it in, in Alien versus Predator? I'm in the slots, four by four. You're right in the place where you're supposed to be, and there is a type of love, joy. Uh, that's a Quaker form of, of feeling you're doing what you're supposed to be doing at that moment. That's called flow. Now, mm -hmm. beyond flow, are the ecstasy states of jhana, J-H-A-N-T-A. And in my Power Tools book in the eighth chapter, uh, which, by the way, I'm now going to have eight chapters in everything that I write because I'm going to use that as my codex, just like Crowley used Lieber. And the reason I'm talking about Crowley is because I'm going to suggest that the extension of man is his understanding and use of altered states of consciousness as tools in a toolbox that we no longer, we have not yet explored. I have watched a woman in stress, distress, rip a car door off an automobile to save her daughter in a burning automobile. How does she do that without breaking her bones? The steel is not possible to rip that off. Bones aren't strong enough. How can she do that? Well, that's because consciousness isn't real. It's a dream. And what is possible is that imagination is reality. And that we are asleep right now. And what we call death is a form of waking up and going back home to the multiverse. And we do this every night, many deaths. That's why my Sifu or uh, Master Sharon saying, uh, hi, I see you. Uh, oh, is that Avatar? I see you. <laughs> Did you have a question? I'm sorry. Or are you just showing me your picture? Why am I seeing you? Oh, there's mm -hmm. more people joining. Uh -huh. I see. I just oh, wanted. Oh, you're starting to see there. I got gotcha. you. Okay, I got it. <laughs> um, uh, I don't 
don't know what's going on, so I... I wanted I'm to like, ask, uh, where is the soul, uh, how was the mechanism of connecting the soul to the body? How is it connected? Through which uh, parts of the body is the soul connected to the body? I don't know. I have written about that. I will upload for all of you to read uh, part 9 and part 10 of chapter 7 uh, of the non-local mind that I've just written. And it, I quote Sir Roger Penrose at Princeton, others, that suggest it is structured water in microtubules that leaves the body at the moment of death. There, at the moment of death, there is a 3.2 ounce weight loss in the body. Nobody has an explanation for it. I am going to suggest that that is the physical aspect of the soul. Not the soul, soul is much more, but its physical representation as a scientist, I'm going to suggest as a model that we're going to talk about it as memory water inside a microtubule. And at, at, in, in sleep, when we sleep every night, we have four different kinds of dream states. We have the normal REM sleep, we have deep sleep dreams, we also have lucid dreaming. That is the vector equilibrium matrix, there it is, and so-called buckyball, and the dodectahedral universe. That is our archetype, that, that drawing there. Uh, that is part of the tree of life, and the work I did in the video. You had a question? You had a question. Say again. Go ahead. Is oh, there a question? No, no, I think it's just noise. I think somebody just okay. didn't. I see all these geometries, and I <laughs> yeah. all mean something. And they, if you meditate in your mind's eye with specific geometries, that is the throne chariot of God. That is a time machine. That is a Brahmana. Vermont. Wonderful. That what, is what, what, a way of traveling in space and time. Which geometry should we use? Say for telepathy, which geometry should we use? I'm not sure. What you said? But for telepathy, which geometry should we use? Which that one right uh, there, solids? Uh, might be uh, the uh, heart chakra. I don't know. Uh, they there's seven of them. That's in uh, uh, the Upanishad ports of Hinduism and. Uh, Theosophical Society. These are more highly evolved nerve ganglia points in the body as a metaphor. And the gut, for example, uh, is your lower brain, the one that's outside space time, the one you call instinct or intuition. When you have six things laid out in front of you and you instinctively say, that one's important, that's a future timeline talking to the moment and uh if you can listen and integrate that message from the future what it does is literally changes the past like a cavitation ball with an infinity sign turned on its side as an hourglass as a metaphor and what you have it's a closed system, a past going into the future with the moment. And what you're trying to do is spread that moment out further and lesser. It's sacred, profane. Sacred, profane. And the distinction between the one and the other is the quality of jhana state that you would you experience at that moment. Um, time is an unusual thing. And the reason you experience it is because you also have two brains, the past and the future, if you will, as the, you know, the right and left side of the brain with the bottleneck called the new doll that, you know, trying to get signal from one side to the other. And you sometimes, like Annie Lennox would sing it, I sometimes forgets myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, one. it's a way of look. It's a metaphor of the way you 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 exchange with self. <clears throat> this is the dialogue that is essential in having with consciousness, with a higher part of awareness. Consciousness itself is a, is a type of dream, and many would say 
you know, like the American dream, for that, you must be asleep. <laughs> uh, metaphor again. Uh, you know, it's not real, and the American dream's not real, and the physical reality is we're in deep shit. <laughs> because when they get real tired of Trump, <laughs> they're going to try to uh, 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 dethrone him, and it's not going to work. And what's going to happen next is he's going to make an attempt on his life. And when he does that, the vets of America, combat vets, because <laughs> I've been talking to them, will revolt. And what will happen next is that our country will fragment into nine provinces. That's Dennis Kucinich that says that. He calls himself king of the Midwest. Uh, <laughs> uh, and it's much easier to manage. And the New World Order has won again. It isn't going to work like that. Because we don't have global warming, we have global cooling. Newsflash, and <laughs> and so everything's out of control. Because control is a fantasy; it doesn't work like that. And so it isn't man that's ruining the earth. The sun is changing. Haven't you remembered when it used to be yellow, and now it's white? How does that work? Well, the sun's changing, just like a diver does. Oh, that's talking heads. That's my house burning down, same as it ever was. Uh, we are in cycles, and we are at the end of days, and we are uh, creating this in our own minds with imagination, just like we are the aliens. Do they exist? How could they not? <laughs> you know, they're in our imagination, and uh, our greys, Anunnaki, Nephilim. Well, Nephilim are right here, right now. I mean, you know, what about Bigfoot? <laughs> uh -huh. So and Nephilim are the ones. Nephilim are the ones with the long heads, right? Like elongated heads, elongated skulls. No, that's Anunnaki. Anunnaki ah. out of Peru. Yeah, the Anunnaki are the ones that have the Pope-like head. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> that metaphor. Uh, there is a number of different life forms on Earth. I have been charged early on to vet some of these different things to include someone that crosses over to the other side like Jim Morrison and found a fat Jim Morrison alive working for a laser company down in New Orleans uh, about 15 years ago. If you go to a book called Secret and Suppressed by Feral Press, you will find a uh, an article written by Tom Lytle, L-Y-T-T-L-E, on the uh, uh, the mythology of, of, uh, of uh, 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 who, uh, Jim Morrison uh, because he's not dead. He didn't die. And uh, what, that, what does that mean? Well, there are certain life forms like Anunnaki that live 56,000 years. That's two cycles of the grand cycle of 26,000 years. Now, that two times rolling around the galaxy in our galaxy which is uh, two lifespans. And that kind of makes sense, like Mars, uh, like Saturn return every seven years. There are cycles that have resonance, just like in your gut. Um, your gut has uh, viruses, mold, yeast, uh, candida, H. pylori comes to mind, other kinds of things. And they're all in dialogue with each other in setting up a resonant cavity oscillation of awareness. And that's you. So when you go home to the multiverse, I'm fine. Oh yeah, that gives you more light. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's good. I wanted to ask. It's so good. Jim Morrison, uh, why would he? Why would he uh, move from main from this uh, reality to the other space? What, what was the reason? Do you know? Well, uh, was he hired? constantly going from one state of consciousness to another, like an unruly child, and that's why thought forms rule. And uh, you have ghosts and poltergeists, which are different, and other kinds of entity things and second deaths, where something gets trapped in the first death and can't move to the second one, or the second gets trapped and can't move to the first. I don't know how that all works. That's a medium thing with, uh, you know, uh, some of these people that channel and do what they do. I, I'm trying to make out a, a model 
that is functional for your envisionment and your mind's eye because that's where everything occurs. Your mind's eye, your imagination. That's where it all starts. And once you have that, clang, you push out against the world and it sets up a wave going out. And at some point, if you do it hard enough and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again, that's the repeating of a meditation. At some point, it takes on a physical element of reality. Now, we do this with lucid dreaming at night, every night. We do this with astral projection where you have a silver cord and you go somewhere else like Shirley McLean. You do this in meditation and soul travel, different than astral projection where you have a sound current and the shaman. You do this when you have a near-death experience and you do this when you die. And now, what Zen Gardner and others have written that you will find in the, uh, uh, what is it called, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, is the last grand illusion of your choice. At the moment of death, you have a tunnel of light with all your friends waving and your dog, uh, you know, wanting to kind of come back on, you know, will take you over. Or you have the blue light. Which do you choose? And each of us is different. And that's what makes us unique, is that we have this choice. And you have a decision to make at that moment of death. That is uh, Zen Gardner, others. I really like Zen. I know that he was ostracized for having been, in his early life, uh, part of the children of God. Well, I was part of the military, so what? <laughs> Here I am today. You know, we all of us evolve. And so I choose to not make judgment on people like that. What I do is in that very moment. And that's Let's invite, Go ahead. Let's invite questions from the audience. I'm sorry? Let's invite questions from the audience. Yeah, please. Please, yes. Speak up, speak up, people. Speak up, what do you want to know? Uh, you've got Swami, Swami says, little uh, Carson, Johnny Carson, Swami says, <laughs> yeah, ask. All right. I'm trying to give you what I understand. Uh, Christian uh, is asking, Christian, do you want to speak? Yeah. Christian? Yes. All right, she's asking, the collective, Hi. oh, go, go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, different people like, um, Rupert Sheldrake and um, Jung with all this collective unconsciousness and morphogenic fields and our cell memories too. Does this mean that um, we have to, I mean, thinking about all these different places that we have memory, such as that we store memory and then the acoustic records and so on and so forth. Is yeah, that why it's so necessary so for people to ground themselves? It's all illusionary. I'm not, everybody has a different way of envisioning it. That's why magic is called the art of changing consciousness at will. It is sleight of mind, not sleight of hand, laser main, it's sleight of mind. And using the mind, this mind, this brain, is here to make all your beliefs true. I wouldn't have seen it if I hadn't believed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a way so of people with, so people with alzheimer's or with um a dementia and so on and so forth do they lose that um ability to connect to those memories or is it just a state of um of their lesson where they have we to go inward yeah i believe my personal belief is that we were engineered to forget with the fourth genome in our blood type Reaches negative. And there's some anthropological data to suggest, I'm not sure it's real, in the 50s, some Australians went to Antarctica and found scrolls to talk about humans prior to the fourth genome appearing. Now that's a metaphor again, something to integrate and realize that what you're trying to do is get past this creepy uh, block of past lives, future lives, that you can easily 
go into with altered states, not consciousness. And um, with that said, everybody is different in the way they associate the symbolism and the validity of content. And that's because in the voice of the silence, they say there are 10, 10 different sounds. One here is in the right ear. Shove it, S-H-A-B-D, the voice of the silence, the lost chord, Gaia at the end of the rainbow doing the, what do they call it? What did Kent McKenna call it? Zero point energy, hydrogen vibration, who knows? It's, you have 10 different sounds and that determines what level of spirituality that you're at. And you can uh -huh. read different translations of the voice of the silence and the Shabbat. I, uh, I taught this in 15 courses at Harvard called Metaphysics. And course Metaphysics 1, which was in 1990, covered these topics right here. I don't know if you can see that. I'll send yeah, you. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, okay. I'll oh, let oh, you look at them. That's what I covered. And you'll notice that Satmat is one of the things I covered in the first lecture series. John Mack took the third course in 1992 or three, I forget, and then began his alien abduction studies. I have 15 different courses I taught from 1990. 2001 and now here I am 16 years later as Dr. Strange master of the mystic arts trying to somehow a battle of some creepy stuff going on around us that, that I is, can't explain is, to you and uh, I have no words let me, clarify, let, me clarify, let me clarify on uh, memory, memory. So there is uh, uh, there is an echo hold on I will mute some Don I will mute you for now um, and Quintesson, I will mute you too. Hold on. So, uh, Adrian Dvir, um, he's now dead, but uh, in Israel, he was contacting aliens, contacted by aliens, and he was into biophysics and uh, biomedical stuff. And he was very interested in, in how the memory is stored. So, the aliens told him that, uh, you know, this, the synopsis is where the new, new, uh, a neural cell, a neuron, has lots of legs and where the neuron one leg of neuron touches another leg of another neuron that place is called synapse and that's where a lot of <clears throat> action is happening oh so, uh, they said that in synapses uh, there is a synthesis of etherical ethereal molecules polymers like polymers like protein polymers just not in this physical space, but in other space, in the field. Yeah, we call them microtubules. And uh, these um, this complex molecules store, store, I guess, short-term memory. That's and your structured water in a microtubule. The uh -huh. quality of memory in water is one million times, six zeros, more efficient than our current gallium arsenide or gallium arsenic interface when water touches something it changes its memory systems and each thing it touches is different which uh you know like if it touches plastic your surface tension is this if it touches tellurium the surface tension is so strong in the structuring that the water will run right up the wall and over the other side that's jerry pollock others rustin roy uh, oh, Mark Leclerc at MIT, uh, these are in physics. Um, they uh, now are discovering that the memory in water is, the reason we're interested in that is because that's the smallest molecule that we know of that has a dipole moment. It is that dipole moment where everything happens. The levorotaries, the para, and ortho water going in opposite directions with your dipole. And uh, before you even get into uh, isotopes like deuterium and tritium, and then before you get into clustering of those molecules like H709 with a free radical ion with Willard, uh, old man Willard, Carrie Reams, others wrote about these things 
and uh, in the early years, in the 30s, 40s, and uh, Northrop and Burr come to mind when I quoted their work on the holographic model of the universe. Now, that's in the 30s. And uh, I don't know. Models are that just that. They're models. They're inadequate uh, uh, ways of looking at something that because you make assumed truths and definitions, open certain doors and others are closed. For example, in a quantum universe, uh, you have an indeterminacy with Heisenberg. That means the more you know about one thing, the less you know about another. That's why we invented it in physics, Hilbert space, <coughs> so we could solve <coughs> the so-called many body problem, uh, simply uh, because it was impossible to do it with our constructs of algebra and uh, models of the universe. It uh, formed an intern where you had two electrons and you wanted to do an equation of motion of where anyone would be at any given moment. And that's when we got into entanglement and decoherence and the so-called Bose-Einstein condensate. Now, with that said, that means there's something else going on here that we have yet to grasp in our assumed truth. I remember a time when the shortest distance between two points was a straight line. That's no longer true. What we have now is curved space because of gravity and the idea of a white and black hole. And we have, uh, we were gonna go today to the Oregon Vortex. Uh, that was something I did when I was working with the military. I actually had an interferometer at 40,000 feet and it was bending light even at 40,000 feet. Now, what do you think the Oregon Vortex is? The only thing I can say that it is, is a mini black hole that has somehow gone into the earth somewhere that has created other forms of technologies in other previous epochs <laughs> called ley lines. And the idea of Captain Cathay's work with Harmonic 33 and 697. There's other things going on here that we have not yet embraced in our current epochs definitions of uh, trial by fire and uh, you know electricity and nuclear energy and those directions of technology technology is like a religion it's not real it is uh something that is makes assumptions like for example one assumption i believe that may or not be true is that god is not knowable it only can be experienced and that means you're not prepared for it there's no way you can prepare for it it happens and when it happens it is that moment that's god and that which cannot be known in other words it is beyond the length girth and width of man i noted in the tree of life when they try to do roadmaps going to god kether uh the two primary paths to god on the outer tree are, are the lovers and the hermit you either do it androgynously or you do it you know integrated or you do it with a reflected partner in the external world as a metaphor and that most marriages and bonds or uh, primary relationships are are stagnated or destroyed when value systems maslow hierarchies are, are very like this is for you and this is for her a marriage will usually not be able to continue and the bad news is change is always the rule which means you're always changing including my belief systems and my definitions and uh that is part of your original question of ascension and realizing that when simon says you can only go halfway to the door the goal is not really the goal the goal is actually the journey and that's the constructs of time and space and sacred over profane and what you're trying to do 
is go from love to joy. And then you want to go to a higher resonance of that, which is bliss. And bliss states, the jhana states are what they call cosmic consciousness. And there are eight levels of jhana states uh, that I've outlined. That's John Curtis Gowan and the ontology of mystical states in his monumental work that I used as a textbook for six years in these metaphysics courses I taught on trance, art, and creativity. Am I giving you the kind of stuff you want? Uh, I want to have a dialogue. Yeah, it's all definitely. great, but we have to... Oh, Eli, go ahead. I, Eli? Want, I want to jump oh, in. Oh, Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, let me quickly change. I the... see you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, um, zero point of energy. I, I'm sure you're familiar with Dr. Kesh and his his work. Yeah. But but my question is probably a bit stupid. But uh, when a zero point of energy vehicle is created, I assume it's. Uh, this this kind of uh, energy zero point is changing actually the the gravity when it goes somewhere it changes the um, electromagnetic field of the people that's around the vehicle is there something like that well yeah the modeling systems allow certain realities for example if you choose to not presume gravity is a force you could use the old graffiti uh, there's no such thing as gravity. The earth just sucks. <laughs> I don't want to be here kind of thing. I want to get off the grid. I want to, I want to, I want to get off the wheel. I, I want to go home. I, I, I don't want pain. Uh, you see, pain, if you, have, if you were not alive, you wouldn't have pain. What we're talking about is coping, putting it below a certain level of threshold of awareness so that it's not interfering with your, your thing, just like survival and ego. Ego, you don't get rid of ego. What you do is you take ego and you put it as a little dot in, in the scheme of the whole big picture of things. It's important as a survival coefficient tool, IQ. So ego has its double edge of sorts. It does this, but it also does that just like the concept of time and the concept of space. And when you realize that everything is in the point, hadit and nuit, that he had it because I knew it, my karma ran over my dogma, that place, uh, it is a metaphor of how limiting words and babble are. That's why the Hebrew had uh, uh, mother letters and had a way of communicating more with less. And that is Dr. Avram Moles, an aesthetic perception and information theory. He's a French mathematician, premium one. His book has recently been translated into English, so it's available to you. Uh, but I read him back when he first wrote that whole thing and was doing studies with uh, Carl Sagan. Uh, uh, Carl Sagan used me in the uh, uh, studies with John Lilly at Berkeley with dolphin. And they wanted to know if the dolphins, with squeaks, whistles, and howls, just like our man Flint, <laughs> uh, you know, was a language. Only there are 10 days. When I realized, using Avram Moll's constructs, that, this very old, that the dolphin's form of language was a form of Clifford algebra, and their redundancy coefficient was even 10 times more efficient than Hebrew. And that's a mammal. There are four mammals on this planet that, in my opinion, are more evolved technically than man starting with orca who has a cerebral cortex that's twice the size of man and that mammal is firing 60 percent of it 
Now, we only are lucky to get up to around 10% of usage of the cerebral cortex at any given moment. Some of us are trying to push that envelope, working with drugs and uh, what's called the contingent negative variation, at CNV. That is the jump potential between neurons on a go, no go set of getting access to one side of the brain to the other. Now, that's a cavitation thing again, and it's all in metaphor. And so ascension is about the use of altered states as tools in a toolbox. And tweaking and paranoia are part of your tools, just like a Ford hammer is over a rubber mallet. They are useful in only certain things. And for that, you must first join the church. <laughs> That's a kid. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, uh, you gotta you gotta approach this whole thing with tongue and cheek because I know, as a scientist, I don't know, and I don't think that science is equipped to handle it. However, Crowley started a thing after OTO called the Argeum Argentum, the Order of the Silver Star (AA). Uh, and I am Jane Wolf Branch, and that is toward the aim of religion using the method of science. Now, the two are like cavitation balls. They are identically the same, like the past is to the future. Technology is to religion, and neither are real. They're a closed system like a cavitation ball. What is a cavitation ball? Well, when a drop of water falls from the heaven and hits a pool of water, several things happen. There's waves that go out. That's your future timelines. There's put, it comes back in, created when the waves go inward and slap and form a bubble. That bubble is not water anymore when it pops back up. So put, that bubble is now not a drop of water, but a exclusion zone water inside of which is trapped the medium in which it fell. It's a cavitation of Taurus twister space that Roger Penrose advocates in his distinctional difference between Hawking's and his white and black hole. Now, they're the same. In fact, the two co-authored a book together, and they're point, counterpoint, point, counterpoint. And at the end of the book, they agree they're talking about the same thing. Models of the universe. Ways of what this model will allow you to do and what this one will not. And so we choose these different models as tools like we do altered states. And so my purpose, purpose, <laughs> that's a good word, uh, not intent. My purpose is to give you physical definitions of altered states. And in the ESP book, I distinguish 102 different altered states in the depth of hypnosis. You know, when your nose goes numb and where you're numb, <laughs> there are different levels. Then in my power tools, I do the ontology of mystical states where I'm trying to define the distinction between prototaxic, shamanistic forms, parataxic modes of consciousness, which deal with, with uh, 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 dreams and mythology and metaphor, and syntactic modes of consciousness, which use biofeedback and toys, where you're taking conscious control of your parasympathetic nervous system. And in non-local mind, I'm going to get even more explicit in the different stages of consciousness and altered states and why you use this state to do this and you use that state to do that as a tool in your toolbox. And what you conceive of as God, the ability to be like a titan that can, without breaking your bones, rip a car door off at any given moment that you would want to do that. That is the next evolutionary stage of man where he becomes godlike, which, newsflash, 
is only halfway to God. Uh, we have more questions. Uh, Kin of Kings, do you want to say your question? Hello? Greetings. Yep. Hi. You're good. Um, I joined kind of late again, as kind of usual now, but um, what what type of science like you, you study? Who oh, am I speaking to? Mean, uh, am I a resident physicist or a plasma physicist? I did my undergraduate degree in build. I got a BS in physics, not philosophy of physics, by building the first plasma gun. In my uh, in my uh, masters, I actually made measurements in tunneling called VK center luminescence to. Uh, I made distinctions in measuring rise times between VK centers and other forms of lattice defects that were in the nanosecond region. I needed a sampling scope from Tektronix that could measure. You see, rise times in electronics is 10 to the minus 6. And if I want to make measurements in 10 to the minus 9 seconds, I have to use a very special kind of thing. That was my master's. My doctorate is primarily in resonant cavity oscillators. So I have plasma physics, graduating to solid state physics, uh, gallium arsenide forbidden zones. Dr. Raymond Band, Band theory, was a um, professor at Washington State University as, as chair, a little known English professor from uh, at the time and is why Washington State University owns the gravity wave generator and uh, in Houston, Texas. And uh, the uh, constructs of Fermilab up in Chicago and now over in Stern and uh, your so-called Mandala effect that I posted on, gosh, I forgot all about Chicago and Fermilab. Uh, seems to me it was Luke, I am your father, rather than uh, I am your father, Luke, you know, comic books construe and make <coughs> our modern myths and memes because time isn't real so it isn't CERN messing with timelines it's old age and uh, too many french fries <laughs> i'm just kidding um i write about mandala effect in the time article i the chapter seven is called time travel and the true nature of cavitation and the article the chapter eight that I'm writing right now is called Rock the Casimir, or Adventures in Time Travel. And that will have sections in there talking about how dance and sound change space time. We see that with Ghost Dance and Whirling Dervish and Mukumba. But if you go back into old text, the signs of Satan and semaphore and mudra and the way we did hand gestures as movement like Tai Chi were able to space change space time, then you realize there's something else going on here besides just physics and laws of theory of everything, the big toe. Uh, I like the big thumb myself with Uma Thurman and even cowgirls get the blues. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, everything is in metaphor. You know, we never had 3D printers until Star Trek had replicators. Which came first? There it is. It's time to wake up and realize that consciousness is inequipped to have. Uh, that's how I trained, I trained SEALs. That was my first realization was that there are altered states of consciousness that allowed you to be closer to purpose over intent. That's what distinguishes how a, uh, an artificial intelligent computer, Jade 2.0, the Jade Helm experiments, trying to profile what you're gonna do before you do, like in minority reports. Did you know that the Israeli uh, last month arrested 400 Palestinians for future crimes? And there we are. Well, what is that? 400 Palestinians for what? For future times? Crimes? Yeah. They, they profiled these people using artificial intelligent computers. And the computer, just like in Minority Report, said, these people are going to commit a crime next week. 
Israeli went in and arrested Where did you hear that exactly? I, on my Facebook, I posted it. It happened. And uh, it was in national news. The Where Israeli did it arrested 400 Palestinians for future crimes using an AI. And your third generation D wave technology right now has got two uh, entities that have gone rogue. That means they no longer have handlers. It gets better. You have no idea where we're going on all of this. I posted just two days ago on what an AI is and what it is not. The woman that is doing the talking is a little religious and tries to bring in numerology and the 666 thing because of a religious belief system. But the exercise itself is worth watching. And uh, that's at docram.com. And you will find about the 400 Palestinians that were arrested last month, probably about a week or two weeks ago when I posted it. It happened. Yeah, I, I, I Google there is a, there are news about that 800 Palestinians have been arrested based on Israeli computer program that analyzes social media posts post to predict attacks. So there is some yeah, source for Yeah, no, it's right, man. I got it. I agree with you. No, no, no. I don't no. know. I, I, I cannot justify just to say there is some, you can Google and find some traces of that. Yes. Yeah, but here's the problem. A computer does not feel pleasure when it beats you at chess. <laughs> We're in metaphor again. Now, that's what made you God's favor. You have choice, even over Michael and Gabriel. And so that's why the war in heavens are going on, because you have something they do not. Even when you read in the old magic books, the grimoires, of the greater and lesser keys of Solomon. Basically, your demons, scalers, shadows. That's why in Jungian psychology, it's called projection of the shadow. It is a shadow on the ground is you. It is a part of you deemed unworthy, like jealousy, rage, anger, greed, etc. the deadly sins. There are 72 of them. If you go back into Sumerian texts and why I was asked to teach a course in demonology back in the 70s at Georgetown to the Jesuits. My background in magic is unparalleled, and I'm prepared to quote texts and forms, and the courses I taught, you know, are but each one of these, by the way, not nine weeks of audio lecturing, questions and answers like we're doing now, include the rare manuscripts download that I'm quoting from. And the first one has Manly Palmer Hall and the usual things like the unfortunate and how to defend yourself with psychic self-defense. These are things when you start to go into altered states, shortcuts to grandma's house, each have big bad wolves and the cooties, Alabama ticks. You gotta defend yourself because when you start to go in joint participation, with something that's dead, a thought form, uh, a ghost, uh, then there are larvae and uh, flies. <laughs> Is that the right word? That will eat at your etheric body and make you sick. And so you have to be prepared, metaphorically speaking, when you journey into altered states. Now, taking a drug like ayahuasca, a dimethyltryptamine, whatever, um, LSD, like we did in the 60s. Uh, th these are shortcuts. And as all shortcuts, uh, don't really give you the solidness of the 30 years of meditating. Using a brain driver to get your brain back into that of a meditator for 30 years works up to a certain point, shortcut. But you have to reinforce with biofeedback, you you know, con controlling heart rate. That was Andrea Puharic and his book, Beyond Telepathy. And um, that was Lawrence Lashon was the one that wrote The Medium, The Mystic, and The Physicist. And those books talk about the three grand delusions of space, time, and ego. Um, now, uh, Rick, Rick uh, can, can I interrupt you for now? Uh, sure, uh, sure, sure, sure. That format, that we, format have, we have lots of people uh, ready with questions, and um, 
Uh, okay. It would be nice if you invited some questions. Also, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I apologize. Thank you for bringing me into Tro. Uh, that's my handler. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, so our, our friend uh, and member Shir, he's in Israel and he's pretty closely following what's happening there. So he says it's likely the disinformation about the arrest of people. Maybe it's a, maybe there are some news on the web, but uh, he's in Israel and such a big uh, arrest would be would have been noticed and it doesn't seem that it has happened so maybe you're, you're well, not, that's, not that's, real you know, we can agree to disagree they are using d-wave technology in chicago right now after they moved it from new york to profile certain uh, uh, uh areas of chicago on crimes that are statistically about to happen and they are doing oh, I, that. I, I believe that you know they're working on that but you know what do you mean? Well, Eight hundred people to be arrested. It, it's hard to not to notice. So, if if that happened, that would be like real, really done secretly. There is nothing public in Israel yeah, well, that has been Mossad that. did this. I uh, just like the nine eleven. Mossad had that technology. They uh, they were not in charge with. But you can talk to Judy Wood. They were the ones that gave us the concepts of using instead of fullerene inside, you know, fullerene water instead of using a microtube buckyball. Instead of doing exclusion zone water in it, you put deuterium in it, and it was Lockheed that used the teleportation laser to trigger it. And when you watch a 617 foot steel beam fall in free fall and dissolve into vapor, there's only one thing in nature that I know of as a scientist that will do that, and it is not jet fuel. Mm -hmm. How does that yes. work? And so they have forensics now where you can put carbon fibers in an aircraft and uh, just like the evil Dr. Uh, 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 Spock and the evil Captain Kirk in that one universe where he has this little device where he can make things disappear or die or vanish, we have that technology. Okay. And Carnegie Mellon is the one that tried to erase me from writing that back almost two years ago. And I can I can name names, uh, but you go ahead and believe what you want to believe. That's fine. Uh, we do have that technology, and I'm here as a scientist to tell you the physics of how it works. And uh, now, with that said, are we using it? Well, tactical nukes are being used right now. Thermal nuclear fusion bombs all through uh, Gaza and Golan Heights, and that's what Russia just detonated up in the northern part of Russia, and you go right ahead and believe it. Now, in terms of Israel, um, I am not a Jew. I am a hermetic Kabbalist, and I did study with Gershom Sholem, so I might be considered study. And I am a, a believe that the Kabbalah is a roadmap on how to get back to the garden. And I have written about that in 12 volumes that are unpublished called the holistic kabbalah on pathworking and they're exercise books they're literal on visualization things you can do that will really change things now am i real probably not but you can measure my credibility in terms of what i've written and what i say and i'm pretty transparent i don't have agendas i'm not trying to i do think that uh, the new world order is uh, Nazi-like, uh, Agenda 21, uh, and our rights as a uh, America, I think that's abominable. And why I don't like, while I don't like Trump, he's like Putin. He's a nationalist, and he's trying to give at least a portion of America back to Americans, like Putin did with Russia. And I can say that Putin, Putin is a criminal. How could he not be third richest man in the world? But at the same time, when he came to the United Nations and said, you want to come to Russia and be a Russian, you speak Russian. And I remember in high school when we called that language Esperanto. And that was the language that would allow us to talk to Brazil and uh, 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 Colombia, Colombia and other places that didn't speak Spanish. They spoke uh, a Guatemalan, or they spoke uh, uh, Mexican, or not Spanish. Uh, there were different forms, and we had Esperanto. And so today, in Grants Pass, Oregon, when I'm asked where the Mexican border is, 
I say it's 100 miles north. Now, I'm just kidding. But uh, what is happening in our country is uh, uh, our educational systems have gone down into a black hole. They, uh, at the time I was in school, in the early 50s and 60s, English and uh, America was considered number three and number six in the world for education. And it only became number one when you went into graduate school. That's because uh, you had toys. And today, America is no longer number six in the world for education for grade school on. It's now number 12. And uh, how does that work? It's because they're trying to control the masses. And I. Uh, I, I suggest let's go on the positive side. side. I mean, there is okay, so no many conspiracy theories and we like them. But uh, really, I want to keep I it positive. I, let's invite uh, uh, Kieran to speak. Kieran to ask a question. Yeah, I try. Kieran, you there? No sound from you. You are not muted, but there is no sound coming. Is he here? Maybe he left because I offended him. I made no offense to anybody, by the no. way. I really don't. Sure. And everything I say is opinion, and I know I don't know. Uh, sure. Do you want to speak? You were next in, in questions. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I didn't left. I accept all opinions. I just say that. I have connections to the army, to the police, to people here who are speaking about things that are going underground and nothing about that was said. I can tell you that the Ramadan festivals, uh, you know what a Ramadan is, I guess. Okay, I need some help here in understanding. Yeah, so people. what is the okay. question? Yeah. Okay, first of all, just to be clear about what you said earlier, that's what I'm saying. Um, the oh, like I didn't do it, and I'm military. So if the, if I didn't do it, and I'm military, what does that say? There are with when I worked at the Pentagon, for example, there were floors at the Pentagon that were literally shooting at each other. We're talking about uh, no accountability uh, uh, with certain cells within. A bureaucracy, and I am uh, a nerd, not a spook, and I know I don't know. And even at my highest levels of clearance, where I had vault permits, I could walk into certain vaults as a reader, three days of the condor kind of guy, and see things to try to interconnect what they are without having to tell why I'm in that vault or what I want to read. I just grab whatever I wanted and try to make connections. That's what a vault permit is. That's not above, they never had above top secret. They had classified uh, security. They had uh, secret, top secret. And then the top secret, which was an orange badge, had green dots or buttons on it for vaults that you could go into as above top secret, where you could walk into any it and just do anything you wanted. And uh, I had three of those. And that's where I was in levels as a reader for the government. And I can tell you that even with that level of clearance, I didn't know. We knew about aliens. That uh, you Take that, find out who it is, and I'll, I'll get back to them. Um, sorry about that, gentlemen. Uh, uh, I know we knew about aliens. At the time I was doing it, I, where we were more concerned about what the Russians were doing. And actually, it wasn't Russia because it was Czechoslovakia that was way ahead of everybody in the so-called psychic discoveries behind the Iron Curtain. Ostrander and Schroeder were personal friends of mine. They have two chapters in one of their books on my work alone. Back, and that's how old I am. However, even then, when I went to Broom Lake and met Krill, I have no memory of it. They did something to me. I don't know what that is. I, uh, uh, if I, uh, 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 That's all right. Keep breathing. We are uh, good. I want. I want. I want. I want. I want. I want. I want to try to get that memory. I can't. And I'm. That's almost forty-seven years later. What did they do to me? I don't know. Uh, uh -huh. But I don't know. I. But I'm still clear. I'm. I'm. I, I remember seeing her it krell was a female uh i don't know how i know that it was uh in my that's what led me to write about synthetic telepathy uh yes, was, yes. 
You know, right, I mean, right. I, I can hear it. How can they communicate when there's no sound? I, I don't know how they did that. That's where it led me to do the work with Alan Frey at Willow Grove. And uh, that's the level of security I'm on, developing weapons. I didn't know. It's like everything. Deuterium. Deuterium is a weapon, and it will also be used in medicine. It's everything is not good or evil. It's neutral, and it's man's application, not God, and or God's. And I uh, am confused realizing the limitation of my structure of what my education is and now i can only imagine what the children i wouldn't want to be a child now gee i think that's terrible now let's, you know, let's bring another when question when you talk about israel and kibbutz, oh, i always thought that was very cool uh, you know you guys dug in and trying to retain something that belonged to you for in history that the nazis at all took away from you uh mo muslim and uh, but but there's inner things going on. For example, as a Navy SEAL, I would say this is no longer the country I served and protected. And I'm now starting to realize it may not have been. It was hijacked even when I was a Roger Roger guy. And I don't, I don't, I don't know. I know that even though I vote one thing, somehow it passes. How could that happen? It failed six further previous times. Josephine County has tried to get law enforcement to increase the budgets for the law so they can have more gendarmes on the street and the so-called serve and protect, which is about prisons and capitalism. And I, and so it's been voted down six times. Well, apparently this last time, seventh time it passed. That's impossible. And the, uh, accountant that did it, uh, got hired by Jackson County immediately afterwards and taken out and run somewhere else. Uh, I don't believe any of this. And yet we're being fed something, my finger on, but that isn't what I voted for. How come it passed? Well, Portland apparently has more votes than Southern Oregon does. Let's yeah. move from politics to spirituality and positive stuff. I, I hate politics. I uh, it's so interesting, I, but... but uh, they are part and parcel of even spirituality. If you go to India and up into the Punjab, uh, where I was in Bias, and uh, I watched a Pakistani come down to assassinate my teacher. And what he did is he started to study my teacher what happened next and why he's my teacher is the Pakistani changed his mind and became a devoted satsangi. <laughs> that is, wow. well, that happened. That's a true story about Sharon Singh. Now, now, with that said, that's the distinction between smoking pot with Piravalaya Khan and studying with Gopai Krishna and or going over and I say with Krishnamurti on Orcas Island. And yet, that's fourth plane. Fifth plane is like he came back for us like christ did or whatever you know taking on sin or whatever he's here that there are in in the torah and i translated my own translation they there is a passage in there that would suggest that there are 50 living christs on earth at any given moment and only two of them are for man the other 48 are doing god's work floating in a cave in the Himalayas, who knows what they do, it's unfathomable. But the two of them are like fifth plane mystics. They're wonderful, they're wonderful. wonderful. Let's let's ask let's get Karen get... to speak. Sure. Karen, can, can you speak, can now? speak now? Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, yes good. Okay, hi. Hi, I nice to meet you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I, I'd like to understand a little bit more about uh, your um, history with magic, and uh, you mentioned the OTO. I'm a I'm a member of the OTO, so I. Um, what grade are you, Mom? So I'm just interested to hear your background and and uh, you know were you were you around during the time of the OTO when it when it was so, much stronger? Or? Yeah. yeah. Uh, in 1968, I met Phyllis Seckler. And she introduced me to Mildred Boningame and Helen Parsons Smith, the three witches. Okay. <laughs> and a great, a great Grady McMurtry was at that time out of California. 
and he was being duped by uh, Lee Heflin, Lee Farland, and the usual suspects. And uh, I'm Jane Wolf Branch of AA, and my lodge, okay. is Victoria City Lodge, out of Vancouver, BC. Actually, it's in Victoria, on our, on Bainbridge Island. I mean, on uh, 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 Vancouver Island, and uh, up in Canada. And that's Gary Gage Cole and Judy Sun. I haven't been. I'm ice. I'm Oak. Oasis, which means I was offered Halifax or grade 10 with OTO, and I chose not to be the Caliph, and so it went to Breeze, not uh, uh, the usual people that were covering it from Bill Heydrick and others. Uh, Bill Heydrick was my friend, and what I ended up doing. What am I hearing back there? Is that just me feedback? I think it's just me. I think I have to uh, mute my mic. Let me do that while you're talking. Oh, you don't need to do that. You're beautiful. Yeah, nice. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Okay, well, um, what I started with uh, Tim and Morning Glory Zell with Church of All Worlds and Neo-Paganism and the nests in Ukiah. And then, you know, sex is good. And then I graduated to uh, Sandra Wachowski and the church. Uh, the, uh, what is it, uh, Coven Camelot, Star of the North, and then I was OTO uh, with Bill Seckler out of uh, oh, Northern California, place where she lived, and Grady, and then Grady branded me uh, Oak Iosa, uh, Oasis. Uh, Oak was at that time a think tank I had put together for Battelle and Douglas United Nuclear and Boeing on the work I did. Uh, with uh, the think tank at Princeton that I was part of, and uh, I, I, uh, I, I was always a whiz kid. I, they, they, you know, I, I, I was smart, and I, I don't know that that means anything because I'm not very. But I did. Uh, I went from witchcraft into magic, and now I've gone into something I can't even. I mean, I met Denning, Dennings and Phillips, the Barchinskis in Arm. Solus, I lectured on that. And what is it? Metaphor? metaphor? Is it metaphor that talks about Orm Solus? Yeah. Yeah. Back in 1993, I was doing Leon and Vivian Barshinsky and their work out of uh, England. And uh, I uh, knew Hartman and some of the others that were the older German forms of OTO. Uh, I Particularly, uh, I was impressed with Crowley and went through and did the Order of the Silver Star and then became uh, part of the College of Kalima. And you'll find, okay, that's in 1970. And uh, so I've been an active participant for all these years until recently when I'm no longer interested in lodges like that. I, oh, okay, I, okay. I, and I'm grade 11. Is what I oh, okay. We, 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 we have, we have in Europe. I'm in Europe. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm getting. I said I'm in Europe, so um, we have um, here a very nice uh, library with all of the, um, you know, the workings and everything with the original books. And everything. So it's really cool. But I just wanted to hear your your background in that. Thank you so much. But, but what is that? Oh, we, we heard a lot of names and words, and we don't understand what it is. What is that? Um, it's it's the order founded by uh, was well, not founded by Alistair Crowley, but he he joined the order um, after he was kicked out of the Golden Dawn, and then eventually yeah. he was kicked out of the OTO as well. But um, he and then he went and did the AA, which is the um, am I right in my history? And he wrote uh, the Book uh, of the Law. Theodore Roos gave him uh, the charter because of sex magic and the mass of the Holy Ghost. And the ten right, right. Okay. But, but what is it? I, I still don't know the words. It's, it's, it's an like order. The order. It's, it's, what is the order? It's, it's like Masonic Lodge of, or something. Well, it's a it's a magical uh, mystery school, basically. Of, oh, okay. uh, of um, yeah, and it's How based it on. Um, yeah, the, like we're all trying to go to the same place, you know. That's and crawling. It's all trying. Way. It's all about. Knowing yourself and and um, yeah. trying to uh, yeah. reconcile your place in the world and and finding uh, your yeah finding love. How is it different from other schools? Like there are many other schools. What is the difference? What is the specifics of it? Um. Well, it's it's it, that, that's a whole lecture, but 
it, it's just it's based on uh, Egyptian uh, mysteries, the Egyptian mysteries, and goes back into that, and then uh, then it's but it's a Western take on that. But if you also okay. look at it on a That's deeper way, you incorporate yeah. the, um, the, the tree of life and and Kabbalah, yeah, as well as. Um, you know, you can even go into through Hinduism because Hinduism and and the gods of Hinduism line up very well with um, Kabbalah. So it's just it's just a magical order. Okay, is um, it militarized or is it Western I, mis military I, I, or it is I, everywhere? Yeah, I should have also mentioned I started it's with everywhere. I started with Theosophical Society. I okay. also <laughs> did Rosicrucian. I also did Rosicrucian, and then okay. I studied with Gershom Sholem. And uh, be and studied where I had to learn old Hebrew and Greek to do my own translations. I did that in the early 70s, mm. and then from there I'm now here. And I know I don't know. <laughs> and I <laughs> the teacher can only take you as far as they themselves have been. And Crowley died as a drug addict in Hastings. And so with yeah. that said, with that said, I've been to Mars. I understand. Yes. Did you, uh, <laughs> are you are you familiar with Lon, are you familiar with Lon Milo Duquette or not? Do you I'm know? Sorry? Are you familiar with Lon Milo Duquette now? Oh yeah, I know Duquette. He's with Lon with, yeah, he also studied with Bill Seckler and was part of our little group. He was yeah. lower in grade than I was because I was earlier. Yeah, I started with McFarlane and Heflin and uh, you know the usual. So I studied with uh, Sandfield Jones. Sandfield Jones oh, okay. was the one that gave me his library. And uh, when okay. the, he died, his widow gave me the library. That was when I had Beltane and uh, was selling Order of, of the Orient. Yeah, no, that's not right. Ordo it's, it's Order Templi, Templi yeah. Yeah, it's Order of the I'll Templi type it out when we stop talking. It's the Order Templi Orientis, but uh, Order okay. Templi. The Orientis. But um, I just want to know, I'm, I'm a friend of Lon Milo, um, so, and I study well, under him. Well, that knows me because I watched him in ritual, break a circle when someone knocked on the door and Phyllis Seckler allowed him to do that. And when he did that, and when she did that, is when I stopped going to lodge. Oh, he's much, he's a little bit uh, irreverent, but I really, he's, he's, now you're talking probably 30 years later and he's yes, really uh, lovely. And we all evolve, and that's correct. Yes, ma'am, that was 30 years ago. Yes, ma'am. And I don't write, I have. We all have to break a circle every once in a while. <laughs> oh, you should never break a circle. I That's know. why you have. Well, a I think it depends. I, I, I have, I have, um, I have different views on that. I think it depends if you need that circle and if you're dealing with your inner or your outer, um, and and how much of it, uh, how how you know how much you externalize or internalize. So, I walked around yelling Ouroboros, uh for about ten minutes the other day. And then I had to apologize. So, but anyway, it was really a pleasure talking to you. It's a pleasure knowing you also because I have not talked with OTO people in possibly 15 or 20 years. Ah, uh, see, it's a sign. You know, I have all of Francis Riccardi's artwork. I have all of it here. I can bring a piece in. One, one moment, I'll show you one piece, which is one of the uh, 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 watchtowers. Just okay, cool. I'll, I'll explain it to you later. Oh, no, you we need a stronger host because here we go, baby. Wow. She doesn't stay on topic. That's All right. What I have. This is one of the oh, ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cool. The golden Dawn, and that is the original artwork of, of of and I have twelve pieces like this. These are four. Or when you come into my door, I have a I have a split level home, and you have either go upstairs or downstairs. But before you do that. You walk in this room, and the four watchmen are right there, and that's how you enter my home. <laughs> well, you know, in, in in England, there was a big split between the Golden Dawn people and the OTO, and that's still going on to this day. They still haven't quite reconciled, and so you you both you have to study both. You have to study the right and the left, or else you never get a full picture because each one of them is holding on to everything. The Democrats and the Republicans are wings on the same bird. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, thank you, Will. All right, we have yeah. Ed to ask a question.
Ellie, Do what they can will. you speak? Thank I'm you. very impressed. Okay. I don't get to meet very pretty women that are also into magic. It's always a bunch of old ladies and bag bag women or something weird. And down here in Oregon, <laughs> they're all taking drugs as their rationale for practicing magic. They, they don't missed have the point, didn't they? Yeah. Well, let me tell you, and, and I don't want to dominate this talk or anything, but that, no, but Book of the Law changed, my, changed everything for me. Book of the Law, like, was awesome. It kicked me right in the, you know, I, I really woke up okay, well, that because two. I had had a, I had had a Holy Guardian, Guardian experience, uh, experience already. And so when I did read that book and when I went through it, I knew exactly what it was about. And I really that was, was uh, it, and it wasn't even written by Crowley. In. Now, well, his channel. Chapter two, he says, "Add, divide, multiply, and understand, and one will follow." And while Stanfield Jones wrote that Anatomy of the Body of God, Iona Miller and I wrote uh, the Vector Equilibrium Matrix for Buckminster Fuller, and in there it's n equals fifty, v equals six. And I have that paper I would be honored to give to you. And that's why most European lodges call me the follower. Do you um do you have any of the original works of Israel Regardi or not? I have all of his stuff. I always <laughs> got an inheritance. That's part of my library. I'm I would he's my, he's my favorite. I'm calling for he's my now, favorite. <laughs> I bid I I I bid for no. I'm calling for Aces. What do you got? Because I've got Danfield Jones, I've got Frederick Cod, you know, I've got uh, uh, Francis Regardi's works. His, his, uh, their lady Sarah Carter Cunningham, um, uh, Sarah, uh, was lived in Glendale, Oregon for years. I met her in 71 when I started Beltane and she made all my things. She was raised by Francis Regardi. That's how I got it. She was uh, a Navajo that was put on his doorstep, and he raised her for uh, until she was an old bag lady. She died just this last year. So I love it. And I'm capable of going more if you want to go longer. I don't care. Okay, we I could. I it. think we could, I could talk to you on another time because I think for a lot of people this isn't part. They don't know what we're talking about, so it's it's kind of like kind of like foreign language. No, no, I'd, I'd be happy to. At another time. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay Eli, good. Eli? Um, well, this is why this is why John Roach, who does all the big comic conferences all through North America here, had me drive up in my 280Z and build me as the real Doctor Strange. And the kit, they're gonna they trotted out 12 artists from Marvel to do comics on my life story. And uh, they what's happening is the kids today are seeking a role model that's a superhero or whatever that uh, is real. Not Spider-Man with superpowers, but a uh, normal human being that is battling the universe. And um, I was invited with Kerry Cass. Kerry wanted to bring me over to Europe last year. And I had no way of getting home if the thing failed. And so I chose not to go. But I have more than 12 lodges, including Berlin that would like to have me visit for pathworking. I have systems in Croatia and uh, uh, Sweden that have been using the holistic Kabbalah now for almost 20 years, pathworking. Wow. And uh, I'm not a magician in that sense of it, and I don't care to be a leader in that area. I turned down OTO. I, I, that's not my path. My path is something else, and I know what it is, and that's what I'm doing. I'm writing. And I, I'm driven. <laughs> I, I love it. And these 15 audiobooks are going to set a foundation in metaphysics, taking all of my cum from all my different things and with my physics background. And I would say to you, I'm the physicist that didn't blow himself up. L. Ron Hubbard sponged off of Jack Parsons. And Jack Parsons was a wealthy guy and blew himself up. In those, uh, those oh, that's right. They, he blew himself up. That's true. But that don't you think that was that the rumor is that that was after a um, magical working that he did that. Uh, yeah, that's exactly correct. That's yeah. uh, breaking the circle. <laughs> that's how it yeah. works. That's like in the but movies. I think yeah. you can break a circle with reverence, and you can break a circle with irreverence. I think. 
Well, you might do it. I'm scared to. I wouldn't dream of doing it myself. Well, I, I'm like, well, I don't know. I, I, I had a big discussion with someone the other day, and if you look at the, the high magic rituals from then and the stuff, like the whole thing with, you know, if you follow the teachings of Abramelin and, and you look at that whole, you know, working. The sacred magic of Abramelin the Maj. And, and let me tell you, that magic But you think about how, how, how dated that is. I mean, you could never, I mean, first of all, as a woman, I would never even be permitted to read it and, or, or to even practice it. What do you mean permitted? That might be us, man. What it says mean? it says right there in that book that women are not allowed. Oh, uh, yeah. So does Paul. I got Buster. mad when I talk on the Necker Cubit space where he gives you misinformation for the vulgar. That's true. And and if it was if it was translated by what's his name? Actually, there's a new um, <laughs> there there's a new um, version that's come out. I haven't read it yet, but it has it's it's a it's a different uh, translation than um, what's his name that did it. Well, so that's um, why. Blavatsky did her translation of Voice of the Silence, and Crowley did his, and uh, William and Westcott did his, and da 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 did right. theirs, and okay, everybody uh, wants to be, oh, everybody, um, uh, how, do, how do I put it, uh, Robert Anton Wilson, uh, <laughs> Bob Wilson, he, he said everybody uh, is a star, everybody wants to be in show business. Right. <laughs> That's true. It's yeah. true, no, but but, anyway, but but I would I would just say that you know some of those I think you can't I mean I, I I do believe in you know high magic and I and I like ritual and everything but I don't think yeah. that they can be followed in the same way that they ritual. were because it's yeah. different a different world now where there's a different technology and and ritual. there's a lot of things you can no, employ no, 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 no. ritual but the reference the reverence is what's necessary. Yeah, mm -hmm. rituals are when you celebrate a myth. And there are protocols, and if you choose to change protocols, you know, instead of doing a banishing ritual, you can garlic or whatever. It's in the mind's eye. That's the unfortunate. Sure, sure. I mean, I, I've like on the Golden Dawn side, and I've been in many of their, um, you know, rituals and things, and that's so much more about the myth. And and they very they very literally employ the magic part. And the OTO is more about the true right. shifting of the mind consciousness because it's about asserting will as opposed to, um, yeah. Well, 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 I mean the OTO the OTO will do the Goetia and the and the Golden Dawn would never, you know, in the past. Well, then what you try to do is evolve the system from Paracelsus. Yeah. And the Comte Saint Germain and uh, Casa Ligro and Foucault's Pendulum and Umberto Eco and the way he wrote that. And I'm a scholar and I have been doing this a very long time as a scientist. And I'm the first to tell you I don't have a clue. I am trying to find my own way through. What I have discovered, like religion, everybody is different. And that's what made us the length, girth, and width of being human. And everybody, think, it's an art form. What, what would you think about the idea of, of ritual art. combined with actual scientific experiment? Well, that's AA. That's the whole thing. The aim of religion. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, is it working? Is it happening, really? I know that I know that CERN, they did that thing where they did that mock. Uh, they did that mock ceremony, and everyone got really upset about it. Where they did the uh, human sacrifice outside of CERN. Did you see that? Magic Lantern series of dance is what I'm after. And I here's one for you, girl. Study Gabriel Roth, and then look that name up. And she's a jazz okay. dancer. And then go to Kate Bush. Yeah. Uh, Kate Bush goes back to Kenneth Anger. And the concept well, I, I would agree with you on the cake. Uh, I would I would agree with you about movie. dance and the whirling dervishes, definitely. My question was going to be to There is a movie on uh, that's called uh, Meetings with Remarkable Men. And what you want to do, oh, I'm being interfered with. Uh, with um, Oh, it just came on. I'm going to, 930, I'm going to lower it down. Uh, there is a movie called Meetings with Remarkable Men about Aspensky and Gurdjieff when they met. And there is a dance scene in there where 19 whirling dervish, real ones, do a rodent coil. And I saw that and recognized it for what it was. And that's part of chapter eight in my non-local mind book. 
because that's what I'm trying to understand is how to change this movie. And I'm going to try to do it as a physicist. I don't know that I can. I'm going to try. And there's a Portuguese writer, a whole professor in, in Portugal that's writing about scientists throughout history that were spiritual. And he's got a whole chapter on my work. But uh, I know that I don't know. And I don't want a master that is not what I'm seeking to become I don't want to be a leader of a cult group I don't want to do that either what I want to do is write about path working so that you take my work and write your own book that's what I well, want to do it's about the spiral isn't it I mean the whole thing with the whirling dervish is all about the spiral well you mean circles so, like but the, the thing is that's dragon. Hung yeah, out. exactly. But that's also the that's also martial arts, and that's also um, like you well, said, you're talking about mudras. It was a form of meditation. is what it was, actually. Of course, of course. But the thing is, is that you know that the the difference is is doing that with consciousness or versus conscious. You know, you can swirse, you can spin around and have no idea what you're doing, and maybe something happens, or well, you can you spin around with intent. And you're going to an altered state. And what do you think that state can do? Sure, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Well, but you, but the, the difference of going in without with with intention is versus just sort of spinning around and getting well, altered. The difference between prototoxic, parataxic, and syntactic modes of consciousness. And that's gone, right. John Gallen. And that's the idea of doing it with intent. And the idea is intent is what actually happens at the end of the day. And what is slightly different than purpose why you're here and what you want to do is make them the same and if you do that right. none shall say nay right well yeah exactly but and then then what really I mean you can get into the philosophy of what really is what it really is the purpose is the purpose to just be able to to experience which we are doing anyway but to do it consciously and observe yeah. or is it to influence and just to let it alone that's why Castaneda wrote it that way as the enemies of men. And he said the tonal yeah. and the nagual. And the nagual is that which cannot be known. It can only be experienced. And that's what real right. true wisdom comes from. Except in one sephirah in the middle of the abyss called that. And that's knowledge right. through wisdom. And that's a temporary moment, please. Where you leap across the river, roaring river, because there's a rock that nobody saw underneath, and you leaped on that rock, you leaped over to the other side. That's the it's a temporary place, in the middle. Well, it's the difference between remembering and forgetting. It's well, you know the, I, uh, I, I, I I channel. Rhesus negative is mm -hmm. what I think that was put there for us, and that was done. I understand by Anunnaki. Not Nephilim. Nephilim and yeah. Anunnaki are other blood types or other genomes that were other forms of men, like the star child that Lloyd Pye had, that was also looked like a like a gray. And that that skull is over 200 years old out of Mexico. And if you look at the bone plate on it, it looks like if the bone would allow dendrites, so that when they touched each other, instead of using pheromone, they had transfer of information. Rather than audio, rather than pheromone mm -hmm. odor and touching, and that was called the Ant Men by the Hopi. And so I think there's a whole bunch of different experiments down here on Earth. Probably, probably, yeah. It. I. I don't know that everyone will find them because everyone's on their own path and journey, and some of us are just trying to get out of bed in the morning, right? How did they say it in Thunderdome? Because no matter where you go. There you are. <laughs> yeah, that's you, right, man. So what is your big hope? What is your big hope then? What is your what is your end goal? Okay. I'm interviewing so you now. Hope was the last <laughs> evil in Pandora's box. And it comes from effort, not a gift from the gods. Right. That's why God said you gotta help yourself. <laughs> okay. With that said, it's the journey. And that's what I'm doing now. And this is what I have gleaned at this moment. Right. I get it. That's why I'm 11th degree. 
and this, OTR. This is the best lesson that we get, actually, when we realize that the journey is much more important than the actual um, effect or... George, I think he's got it. Yeah. The rain and spray. Which we let go of the need to. You don't need to influence. I mean, it's it's really nice, but you in in the end of it, you don't really need to influence or change anything. But you need to be able to stand in the midst of all of it, right? And I like I like where you're coming from, girl. There's, I don't find many people that get it. Yeah. And so we are not. Working. That's what it's about. It's path working, and I'm about to come out of the closet Good. with a bunch of new books, including my metaphysics. To give you foundation like the kind I had, and we're all different. Yeah. That's what makes it so wondrous is it's an art form. Imagine the sculpting and dancing and all the rest of it. Oh, it wants, I'm going to skip this because it wants to close me off. I am actually has detected Google Chrome is currently on. I know it's currently on. <laughs> <laughs> I've got people trying to stop me right now. I can't believe it. Uh, it wants me to close down Google Chrome so it'll finish it. Can you believe that? That's an automatic thing. <laughs> it's an automatic thing. That's my handler came in to sweep my home and clean me up because I'm just a nerd and I have no clue what I'm doing. I've got cooties all over me. Just move it away from the screen. Don't don't agree to it because it will disconnect you if you agree. So just move it. Move that window so you can see us. I, 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 did. Okay, I nice. took care of it. <laughs> Means I, I turned it off. So I have a question for you because uh -huh. um, because I, I I can see that like your your what you're teaching is based in your magical knowledge, your science not scientific knowledge, which basically they're both art forms. So you're you're combining the two art forms and creating a new uh, sort of magical oh, child out of that. Take it all about yeah. Take the late foot out. But my question. My question to you is because you know magic has been a study your whole life. It's a study of mine for many years now, and I continue will continue, and it's continue unfolding. How do you how do you propose in this sort of day and age now, where everybody is really McDonald's oriented and everything is so fast? <laughs> how do you how do you how do you bring people up to speed? when most of this stuff is a very long unfolding and, and you do reach an age of sort of wisdom, you know, when you get a little bit older, where you really start to have stuff to have the ego driven thought, you know, I mean, you can have it or you try to let it go, but you know what I'm I saying? It's like children, just like Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young did teach your children. Well, your children that is the man of okay, what about the people who are not children anymore? How are you going to get them back to that state? <laughs> I uh, okay. A uh, physical thing I'm doing right this moment. I mentor for Waldorf out of Zurich, uh, but I actually do. I have a 12 year old at Cornell doing his doctorate in organic chemistry. What could I possibly do with that kid? For writing a comic book. <laughs> He's a kid. Awesome. He awesome. Have you seen Have you seen um, uh, uh, Deepak no. Chopra and his son has a comic book uh, thing called Liquid Comics? Do you know it? And they no, do a lot of the themes. They do a lot of the um, the Veda, the Vedic text, but in comic book form. It's okay. really really good. I'm going to do comic books about. And Graham, comic and, and, and Grant Morrison, who's a who's a um, chaos magician. He's also um, the author of the Batman, a lot of the Batman comics, and he's worked yeah. together. Um, I with, like Kill um, Blazer personally, and Constantine when uh, he's at war with everything, man, and sad, including himself. I'm of two minds of this. <laughs> there it is, Two Face. I uh, have to tell you that. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next. It's unfolding. I, I have a plan, but that doesn't mean that we're going to work. Um, what I'm doing now is trying to take everything that I've done and somehow make it accessible to people like you so that you can take my work and do your own. Yeah, okay. Well, you only can do your own, can you? You only can only ever do your own work. <laughs> there it is. Now you got it. By definition, acute eret demonstrandum and uh, QED. And I know that I don't know. And I'm limited with my own education and my own belief systems. If I had been born in Pakistan, would I have been a Christian? 
well, I'm not a Christian. My parents were atheists, and they sent me to Missouri Synod Catechism to armor me. And what happened next, mm. when I came out of graduate school, I was assaulted by a bunch of logic, just like a high school kid is when he goes to college. He's rushed. Well, I got rushed by Bohemian Grove and uh, <laughs> Skull and Bones when I was at Harvard. Let me tell you what I did was I armored myself up, but unlike my folks, rather than do Kenneth Grant and Gareth Knight and Chaos Magic, I chose to believe in God because how could I not in terms of chaos and order? I, I think that it's interesting that everything I eat becomes me. Right. <laughs> well, it's interesting. It is. Yeah, it's well, a that's a yeah. So something else is going on. That's the yeah. best example of transmutation of matter that exists. Yeah, well, Bob Dylan sang it best. Everybody's got to serve somebody. And how did Gerald Clark put it? It's about food chain. <laughs> I've watched Orca chase dolphins. Wow. But, uh, okay. Just on a side yeah. note, just as you mentioned Gareth Knight, you know, W.E. Yeah. Waits, his original tarot cards are in um, a museum here in Amsterdam. There's a very nice, uh, it's called the Rittenberg Library, and it's the um, largest uh, hermetic, yeah, it's, I go there all the time, and they've so got the... A, a friend of mine that runs the Sensi Seed Bank, and I've got a, a apartment always available to me because I'm a drug uh, 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 celebrity. <laughs> I write on drugs. <laughs> and so Amsterdam has always been, there's a little place called the cellar that you go up these narrow up to second floor, uh, near, near the, uh, the that, uh, where, where is where all those hookers are. And, and, uh, in the red light district. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you go up this cellar and it's a costume place and it's, uh, uh, there's a 17th century bone corset that I would like to do a photo shoot with, man. I'll tell you, Amsterdam is cool. Um, I have friends, uh, Sebastian and others that are there. Not you, Sebastian. No, you're a different Sebastian. That's a different one. There's uh, others that um, I've met through Nexus when I do workshops and uh, speak at Nexus conferences in Amsterdam. And there's uh, this one place I was at it's uh it opens at one in the morning for disco but uh you go in there and you uh you're smoking hashish out of a, a big pipe in a private room and in walks a belly dancer and but she's not belly dancing she's doing 17th century folk dancing and it's so cool i have pictures of my friend from the sensi seed bank and his wife and a shocked look when we're going like this and she walks in man and i yeah, Amsterdam is a very cool place. I like the Fat Furry Freak Brothers and uh, Graham Wilson and what was it, Von Bode and some of the others that did their artwork there. I uh, Fat Freddy's cat comes to mind. When the cockroach general is flushing a bunch of cockroaches down the toilet and he says, there's a lot more where that came from. <laughs> Amsterdam just, just, has a special charm for me. I love it. Just so I, just to tell you that, that at that Rittenberg Library, there's a uh, original work from John D. in in the handwriting. Oh, yeah, action the the spirit, original channel, channeling of the Enochian uh, yeah. text. Enochian. I do speak Enochian. I know the call. Okay. Here's the seven. Here's the erection of the trapezoid. Guys and um, guys um, let's see. Gai Mazen Ashish Alim Gaizem Hashish Olam Ono Belose Samilaji Oloi Kale. It's similar to Hebrew. It is what they call speaking in tongues. It is a right. angelic language. My guess is that's how you will talk to Nephilim. And what happened? Well, let me tell you. Africa, by the way, just FYI, was that those tunnels that are it should be into plastic because of the pressures and temperatures go down at 100 miles. When I was in Antarctica, we couldn't go down there. I think they figured out how to get down there. And a friend of mine from JPL said what they found was a bunch of Nephilim in stasis. And when they evacuated Antarctica about three months ago, it's because one of them woke up. Wow. 
Well, I that's just what to I tell think. you something very maybe interesting for you here, here is that um, um, everyone here um, speaks either angelic or um, or uh, like language. extraterrestrial languages. So we all speak them um, here. Um, we, but but Enochian is written down, and there's an Richard, I'm muted you by mistake. That was Eka, and I was. And the things were jumping, so I muted you by mistake. You have to unmute yourself. Oh. Click on mute button. Uh, anyway, I so, but everyone here is speaking. Click, um, please. Oh yes, good, you're good. Everyone here is speaking um, light languages and angelic languages and things like that. If you gotta mute yourself, can someone mute him, Kip? Oh, can uh, you mute Kip? Rick, can you mute again? You have to unmute yourself. Um, mute telephone. I don't know how to do that. Camera. No, you're good now. You're good now. You're good okay. now. Now your video disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now unmute it. Click on uh, unmute and uh, turn on the video back. Now, okay. Now I'm okay. Is my It unmute? wasn't him. It was the guy Kip that came in. Anyway. Okay, the sound, Rick, Rick you, we can hear you, but can you turn on the video back? Do I what? Oh, oh, you want me to do... Uh, you, you're a camera button. I don't. <laughs> no. You're such a good looking guy. Please show yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm muted. Uh, now you unmuted, I but there's still no okay, video. You to... There you go. Okay. Now, okay. okay. Video button. Yes, good. You're good now. You're good I now. Thank it. you. Colored, not the the line goes away. Got it. I have to be protocol. I, everything's different, uh, and so I got it. I apologize. I don't know how to use any of this yet. I'm just learning. <laughs> Be patient with yeah. me. And I'm available all the time to talk these things because this is, in fact, what I'm really about, is talking about spirituality from a physics point of view. That's what I want to do. That is my purpose at this moment. Yeah. And so anytime you guys want me in, I'm your huckleberry because I love to talk about this. I know I don't know, but what I can do is give you some directions on books I've read. You, lady, need to read uh, your Ka Kalaska. Karen, Karen. Uh, you should read Esther Harding and The Way of All Women or Women's Mysteries. She was a contemporary okay. with Carl Young, and she writes about Elusian mysteries, and you are most likely going to become a Benny Jesuit. <laughs> 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 I, I think I'm going to go be a devotee in India, and I'm just going to go live the rest of my life in a in the ashram. I think no, that's where my life is that. headed. No, you don't want to do that. The physical pleasures of sex and touching another human being emotionally is absolutely what? worth it. And <laughs> drugs. And <laughs> drugs. <laughs> I don't do drugs. All hail Eris. All hail Khaleesi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Chaos. I don't know. I don't know. I think the more I know, the more I just don't even want to be even. I just well, that's how ready to disconnect. Huh? What do you think happens at the moment of death? I wrote about that. Oh, you just go into bliss. No. You go straight into bliss. You become childlike. <laughs> sure. Not. Yeah. You don't lose any consciousness, at least according to Sir Roger Penrose. And I have written yeah. an article. I will give that to Max to distribute widely and freely to you people if you'd like to read what I wrote about the moment and the moment just after death. I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> it doesn't mean I'm right. Uh, it's a physics thing. And it has to do with the weight loss and what structured water is and what a microtubule is. And we're not even talking about Hammeroff because Hammeroff was a little kid when Dr. Black, Dr. Burgess, Dr. Chapman first proposed that under John Vanika at the University of Washington on our studies in acupuncture. Uh, uh, can so, I, can I did you, do you know? Oh, sure, go ahead. I want to share something. I, I listened, Max did an interview with Jim and a Pleiadian, a Pleiadian uh, person, it was a man, he jumped in and explained about the four the reality and so the four dimensional earth that uh, has been created already which means that uh, the body does not you actually 
do not die, but your DNA just uh, evolves with uh, another string that comes, and it's a spiritual string in the DNA. It's it's actually visible to all the people that are evolving right now. They have it in their DNA, and the body uh, becomes like uh, um, like something like um, uh, between water and the water molecules becomes a bit wider, one from the other, like um, uh, gas. So the body becomes more like gas and becomes... Um, um, it, it, well, the place it you go, it, you do that every night. You don't know that. And that's why Sharon Singh wrote a book called Die to Live. And mm -hmm. it's about meditation and the little death and going internal where ego or consciousness is not turned off, it it's put in its proper place in the scheme of the rest of what consciousness truly implies. And yeah. ego itself is a survival tool. It is essential in this form. However, we're all of us little children and why the saints throughout history have stressed the importance of training the mind, of meditation, right. and uh, that that is uh, essential. And I started that with Sharon Singh uh, in 1976 when he chose me for initiation. I had had to already be a vegetarian for one full year before he'd even interview me. And when he chose me, he looked me straight in the eye. This is a fifth plane now, and he said right to me right then at the moment of my death that he personally would be there to take me across the abyss and this is a fifth plane mystic telling me this now nobody has ever given me a better hallucination and all of my studies i have studied under i can't tell you how many different nobel prize winners have gone out of their way to train me for this moment by charles muses edward edward porton uh, uh, Gabor, uh, I, I can list them, uh, John Pineman. Uh, 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 I have been blessed, but I am in the moment and I'm realizing that, uh, that that's the fourth enemy of men, old age. <laughs> Remember there was fear, power, clarity, and old age. Those were the four enemies of man, according to Carlos Castaneda. I'm now, just that's me. just a model. And what means that by the time you get it all, you're too old to do anything about it. <laughs> so what I am doing now is writing what I can. And I don't know anybody that has written as much as I have in history, including Roger Bacon. Now, I, that's it. I, I, I have just come out with a nine-volume encyclopedia of alternative agriculture. I'm a polymath, and I'm MacGyver, a living in the woods. Tomorrow, I'm taking my handler into the redwoods and the Oregon beaches and the dunes, and uh, I'm going to show him something that he will not see out of Illinois. And uh, I share my life as a, a joy, and I'm very blessed for what has happened to me, including meeting you, Mom, because I haven't met anybody that could talk to me and ask me pertinent questions in magic for so long. And I'm serving because that is what I am. I'm not a physicist. I'm not an anesthesiologist. I'm not a Jungian psychotherapist. I have doctorates in all of those. And what I am is a magician. And I don't know to what extent I'm going to participate in that area other than path working and uh, exercises, things that I found work for me. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to work for you. Everybody has their own way to roam. Hi. <laughs> yes, but, but we can put the effort, and that's the most important thing. We can take the journey. I, I'm not sure what was said. It was tinny. We interested in co-creating. Well, a little bit of beginning. How did they put it in Clockwork Orange, the old in and out? I don't know. Sex magic, mass of the Holy Ghost. That's Crowley. Um, 
All right. The nostalgic is a very valid. I mean, it, 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 the, the point of creation is that bliss, and then, then the one of the very few, few times that you can, I mean, tantric everything is, is really valid. Well, a child, in my opinion, when it's born, is not born in sin, in my opinion, because. No, definitely not. No, but Steve Gaskins, in his spiritual midwifery, I mean, I remember what happened to me. When I was born, the first thing is that someone hit me and then took me off to be fingerprinted. <laughs> and then worse, they chopped my dick off at circumcision. And I, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm not too traumatized. Well, what I mean, a better way to control people is to, to interrupt the bliss. Do you know what I mean? What a better way to control people and to take away is to to tell them that their very presence on the earth is 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 sin. The well, fact that they, as soon as they arrive, they're ridden with sin. It's pretty... Uh, I've seen children, yeah, I've seen children, and the wonder of a baby, you know, just in the wonder of it. And yet, and you see that in animals, dogs, their devotion, the way they're whelped in a litter, uh, is different. And it makes all the difference how yeah. we come to this place. Yeah. So... I'm going to try to have Nam. That's a good word. That's called grace. Where I have somehow not show my 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 limitations. Look at this. My arm, this arm, my left arm has no bone in it. I can't pick my nose. <laughs> it's got it's titanium. There's a zipper. Uh, you know, it was all gone. It's four inches shorter. My my tailor nose. And yet, I try not to, like in Castaneda, to show my limitations of the way I was welcomed or born, my my mm -hmm. my insecurities. You try to embrace them and use them as tools, so they are no longer limitations. What they are are assets, and that's what all states are. And that to finally go back to the original question of ascension is what it's all about. Learning how to use your limitations to your advantage as tools. I know how to whine really good and play Broken Wing. <laughs> Just kidding. I, 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 I am trying to understand what an altered state is and how I might use it to save my daughter should she be in a burning car. Now that is the use of paranormal and where all my studies went for the military. They used me to study the paranormal and I have arrived at magic as the system that will be used for my ascension. Were you part of the remote viewing uh, uh, stuff that was done with the, um, with the, uh, what's it called? The, um, that they did with the military with the remote viewing? Was it, was remote that remote that or not? That was I'm yeah, trying to think of the, what institute was that that they worked with? They worked with the... Um, Stanford Research Institute in the 80s, not the 70s. Targ which and put about? off trying to change timelines. It didn't occur at SRI because I studied with PRH and Bill Tiller was under me. And when I Bill, say that... See, you, let me tell you something. Bill Tiller, do you know Caroline Hart? Yeah. She was my was like, second I, I, mother. All of those people are all part yeah, of Caroline the Hart is like yeah. my second mother. She's like my second mother, Caroline. But she studied with Bill Tiller. Ha 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 ha! Just kidding. Uh, uh, that, good for you. That's a good background. No, just I love her. I, she's I, gone. She's passed on now. I don't know. You know. On, on the beaches, and she had plans for me, and I chose not to be Caleb. I didn't want to do that, and so instead of uh, uh, Jan, uh, uh, what was his name, Bill, uh, Bill Hydrick, others, they all coveted it. I didn't want it. That isn't what I want to do. And so what I do, I, that, that's ego. In fact, if they had offered me, and they, I don't know who they are, three-letter bureaucracy, if they had offered me to put me on payroll, I would have been much happier living a very simple, quiet life up on top of a mountain as a Quaker, growing my own food. And I wouldn't uh, what they did... <laughs> Oh, I, I, I'm not interested in fame and fortune. Let me tell you. you know how many I would live on the I hill. I just don't want to be a Quaker. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the joy place. At least it's above love. And bliss is next. 
And, you know, being able to be in sync where you flow and everything just happens. That is a wondrous place. I, no, my I, question was, did you, the, it came to the Monroe Institute. Did you have anything to do with them or not? You know, I, I knew uh, Robert from Monroe when he was at Berkeley. We we were that's when he he did his astral projection stuff, and a lot of my work was based on him and several others that were before him. Uh, there were okay because yeah, Caroline was with Robert Monroe, not with uh, with Ben Tiller. I uh, sorry, I, I misspoke. Uh, but I, later, I was trying to remember the name. Yeah, I, instead of using hemisync, I used holosync, uh, brain drivers frequency following function. Uh, it's in one of my books. I use that. Bill Harris is a bunch of Scientologists trolling for people like you and me. Be careful. Uh, that's uh, centerpoint.com. And uh, Centerpoint is up in Portland. Bill Harris is ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Um, I did all of his life uh, integration courses. I have them. I have integrated them into my own systems for myself just like you are doing with yourself taking the best and the least of different things and forming your own collage and that is what we're all doing now and you can find truth in everything and so what you're doing is the resonance of how a future timeline talks to you and saying that's important and that isn't and once you do that now you're in halfway home and I like Ira Progoff, I, Honest Journaling. That's one of the things I use as a tool. I have the AA exam. I'd be happy to forward to you. The one we developed at the College of Thelema. If you look I at the, that. You know, I love it, it. you'll see that book one, number one, is not just Crowley, it's me. I'm the only other person in history, because of Grady, publication in class B. Wow. And that's me, and I write in that regard. And I, and I know, I don't know, and I wouldn't presume to be Aleister Crowley. You know, Crowley was a Victorian period where he tried to shock people, you know, tattooing. Yeah. Six, well, he, well, I, I, I think he, I think he figured that, you know, people that could shock that easily were probably unworthy of the knowledge. So he wanted to, well, it's sort of yeah. a roadblock, you know, to, to, to the knowledge. Like he figured Capone. he could scare you yeah. off, better off. I would have cast Truman Capote as Aleister Crowley. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, at, at the, not the, you know, in his little, uh, uh, what was it, uh, that game we play called Clue. Uh, you know, uh, that Truman Capote would have been a perfect Aleister Crowley, as I understand him. I have audio on Aleister Crowley. I have all kinds of stuff in my library. Wow. Where uh, are you? I'm in Grants Pass, Oregon. And the library, oh, okay. Dr. Strange's library, is here. And I remember the Brady Gang, and I remember all of it. I've been there, done that. I knew McFarland. I knew uh, all of those people. I wow. studied with Danville Jones. Wow. I went up to Canada, and I studied under this man, and he knew I was out of control right out of the gate. Phyllis had her own ideas about me because I was martial arts. I'm a physicist. I boxed at Princeton, and I was world champion in double sword when I boxed with Dukes over in Peking. And now Dukes was two weights above me and was known as uh, Lionheart. Don't and, uh, let me ask you a question. I just, I, what pops into my mind, what I what baffles me is is how it all began in Europe. You know, they they were they oh, all yeah. in the UK, well, and now I'm everything sure. that's happened since Crowley died has happened in the U.S. Well, it Braves moved one year, moved Grand Lodge from New York City one year before 9/11, and set up in Berlin, right. and that's where he is now. And good luck with that. But uh, it's back in. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, as far as like all the history, all the all the things that have happened with all the people and all the development and everything, it's all happened from the U.S., which is strange because it. Well, I can't read German, so maybe there's a lot of stuff happening in Germany that I just don't know because I can't read the German. But um, we all speak German here. You know, Chuck Walters uh, wrote that book, Der Volen Deutsche Bleiben, and was possibly the single most important man in agriculture. And American history, and I was one of his pallbearers, and wrote the potential of herbs as a cash crop, 
native plants of commercial importance and the encyclopedia of alternative agriculture. I have nine volumes. And I am MacGyver. Going in the woods, I can show you how to make a living off God, you know, with his spare parts out there with pine cones and moss and lichens and uh, this and that. I, I'm doing the Homburg right now. I'm doing 200,000 pounds of cascara bark this year because I had to go back to work. Wow. My book sales weren't working because I got hacked, which is one, one of the reasons Russell's here right now trying to, Russ is trying to help me get that back in true and set up security because I got violated by Amazon. Amazon Prime is currently publishing all of my books without permission. No royalties, no income. Somebody else. I think you need a good lawyer. What? You need a good lawyer. I you need had, a lawyer. He got paid by someone else. I had one lawyer, $400 an hour, say, the money's good, you know, like Mark Knopfler. Money's for nothing. But he said, I don't want to be in court for two and a half years with these people. And that's because it's not about money. Right, I understand. It's something else is going on here, and I'm being stopped at every every port. And so, if you want to support me, buy my various books, and or uh, you know, I'm not. I don't want go find. I have a GoFundMe. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. I appreciate that. I like that. I like to earn. I keep. And so, I'll sell you books. I'll give you uh, trades, a barter, whatever. I am. At dead stop and had to go back to work at 73. And that's me with all wow. of my scholarship. And that's because something, someone, and I have a sense that someone close, it's not a three letter initial like NSA or whatever. I don't think it is. I think it's someone close that's taking advantage of my little kid brat thing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And my website's been hacked. I have not had a single quarter on my website in four weeks. I get pendings, but they don't go through. A handshake doesn't happen. So I don't know what's going on. We're trying to vet it. Don't have a clue. I moved my site to a. Stop system. using PayPal. Maybe use something else and get a credit card thing and just go through credit cards and get rid of PayPal. Well, I don't I trust don't, PayPal. Don't, I, used really to do, I used to do uh, merchant services and I did all of that. I'm a small mom and pop. Everything I do, yeah. I do it out of my house. I put the packet with the book and I don't have a performance center and I'm not using large publishers anymore. Like Simon and right. I'm just a small, not big deal trying to, and yet I'm important to somebody because they're trying to stop me. I don't have a clue what that means. I'm not, I don't want to be a paranoid. I don't want to be a whiner. Uh, but you know, there's a group of us that are like this. Uh, Ingram Lightning Source came to me and said, "We no longer care for your business. Mm. I'm having to print my books elsewhere, and the Create Space is uh, uh, Amazon Prime. And look at Nick Baggage. Matt Baggage is the ESB book I wrote. Baggage isn't doing Amazon Prime. Who's doing that? And where are those monies going? They're not going to Nick or I." Hmm. Isn't that I interesting? I, and every time I try to get a lawyer, it's interesting. I don't know the answer. I don't have one either. And here is where I think it's getting weirder because I can't bet this out after for one full year. I now think it might be something smarter than me. And guess where we are right now? Google. And guess who's listening? Google's not bad. Yeah. Google's got your AI. And that is a third-generation D-wave out of Abbotsford. And oh, guess what? That's where I think is the other possibility as I'm dealing with an AI or algorithm is self thinking me. Because my lawyer was just about ready to be down on it when all of that, hey, look, look down there. Five deer are playing with each other down there. Take a look. Go, go look. I have some deer in my yard now. They're playing. Oh, nice. yeah, straight down. Or the tree in that meadow, them. They just came up, and that squirrel's right here on the deck eating all that bird food. Here to uh, Florida. Hi. What happened? That's cool. I oh, don't know. Yeah. We oh, were yeah. If you talk about the deer. Yeah. I live in the. There they are, right there. See them? Right there. Oh, see them? There's three of them. They're all young, too. Or this year. They're young. I got deer in my yard. Uh -huh. And, and my friend from 
Woo! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was my Skype that sent me a message. Don't get alarmed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think we've we've reached the we've come to the um we've come to the end of the, the session because we've been going two hours. So All right, um, mm -hmm. my pleasure so and I, I'm always available to be here. I have such a diverse of backgrounds that I'm called a polymath and that's why I'm still um, uh, Ooh. And, oh, and, and I can't see. I have, I have, oh, nice. I never get out of the club. They're always part of it. <laughs> and, and guess what? I even have a handler from Putin. I'm an, wow. asset. I'm an asset. I I'm not a nerd. I oh, I mean, I'm a nerd. I'm not a a, a spoke, and so I'm important for all of their goals. And Putin, I, you know, is a criminal. I think our government is terrible. I, you know, it, that's why I live in the state of Jefferson. Why I live where I am. I have a bunker where, you know, where all of us dug in. And uh, knowing that it's going to all on the grid, whatever, is all going to collapse shortly, which means we won't have this form of communication. And uh, the internet has just recently been taken over by <laughs> the Ukraine. I don't know. <laughs> I appreciate working with you all. Max, Max sent me some wonderful gifts. I don't know if you do that or not, but Max has been supporting me. He sent me a stapler with some wire so I could get rid of my Wi-Fi. He sent me a speaker so I had better sound. Uh, awesome. Max is amazing. Uh, well, he's helping me uh, so I can communicate better with you, and I appreciate that. And so he... And it worked. Yes. Thank you, Rick, for installing the wire. Now... We didn't lose you for the whole two hours. Your connection was nice, and uh, the video was nice, and the sound was good. It was wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Max, because you uh, deserve a, um, I appreciate what you're doing. And especially these kinds of questions, because Gary Cassidy doesn't go here. Neither, even though John B. Wells is a personal friend of mine, wants to put all my books on his website so we can stop this nonsense. I haven't done that yet. Um, I know some very cool people, but none of them ask the kinds of questions you guys are. And I want to be challenged by some real questions in metaphysics and spirituality. And uh, I appreciate talking about this more than any of it. Yeah, if, uh, if you have any friends who have a bookstore, online bookstore or local bookstore, but I, I guess online bookstore, yeah, contact me and, or contact Richard and um, let's help Richard selling the books like physically. I can download them if you're in Europe, like you are. I can uh, if you're in Germany or, or uh, Amsterdam. I can do eBooks. I, everything I have now is okay. Perfect. I'd yeah, be make sure to share it with us. Yes. Yeah. So there's no freight costs. I can just download them to you. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. That would be great. Yeah, um, if if uh, you're okay with it, um, can we get put your email? Do you take emails? Because yeah, people here would like to contact I'm you. Welcome, and Max can give it to you. Dory, I can give it to you. Whatever you want me to do, Max. That's your, your, your you're in charge. Do you want me to give my email? Go ahead. Okay, I'm Rick R I C K at uh, N W for Northwest Botanicals B O T A N I C A L S plural dot org. The Creature Under the Bridge, nwbotanicals.org. That's an old website. Enjoy that website. There are some download libraries there that I plan to put on richardallenmiller.com, and my shop is forward slash shop on that website. Or you can go to docram.com, which is my Facebook presence, and that's what I do every day. I post what I, maybe five or six articles that I think are important, like the one I ran across uh, the Israeli, uh, someone from Israel arresting 400 Palestinians for future crimes. It actually happened. I don't, <clears throat> and <clears throat> we don't get our media to report properly. Maybe that's why you didn't hear it. I don't know. It happened. And not only did it happen, they're using it in Chicago. Now, that's what the Jade Helm things were all about, was to shake down that software on profiling. Jade 2.0, and now the algorithms that are using up in Abbotsford now with these other uh, AIs is just getting creepy. Because mm -hmm. these entities can go places we can't. And that's one of the things I talk about 
in my non-local mind is machine consciousness and where we would go with transhumanism. That's all Elon Musk wanting to go out and mine that big diamond out there. You know, the only way we can get out into that space is with an avatar. There's no way a human being can go out there yet. We right. do not have to, okay. So how are we going to do that? And money, how did Gecko put it in Wall Street? Greed is good. Well, you know, that's the thing I don't understand because in order to do the AI stuff and in order to like do, you know, astral projection and everything, you have to be pretty, and you, you get blocked if you try to go too far, if you don't have your Imagine correct blocking? mind. Is it the Anunnaki? Is it the New World Order? Or is it the girlfriend down the street that has a heart on on me? Pissed off at me. Exactly. Whatever. This is, you well, know, I don't know. Well, that's the thing. Like, so I think that they can only get so far, and until we sort of reach that higher dimensional mentality, well, that's why, that's we're why never going to get off this planet. Yeah, that's why I made a distinction between purpose and intent. If you're doing purpose, yeah, not she'll say nay. Because you're in harmony. Exactly. Doing that's why, I, and so in some ways, it's like I think. And part of this is just my this is just my idea. But if we know that that safeguard is truly in place, that I almost feel like let them go to that extreme and let them try because they're going to fail. Just by oh, the fact that in Jungian psychotherapy, they would suggest that control is a fantasy. Yes. All right. I think we are ready to wrap up. Oh, Rick, can you give us a blessing? Are you into blessings? And um, listening to more, if you can give us more of um, that language which you spoke. It was Elohim, I think. Maybe no, not. Inokia. Maybe some other. Live long and crispy. Ha, ha, ha. Live long and crispy. I, uh, blessing. Well, um, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love and do well. <laughs> That's the blessing I do when we toast, toast or toast. Yeah. You know, yeah, what that means is you always, love is the law, you try to be open and helping anybody you can until it deters you from your path. Love is the law of under will. That means will is, is the most important love there is. And that's from the Greek, eros, philo, agape, and telema or thelema. The love of will, your purpose here. Wonderful. Uh, yep. you can you can you give us? Um, I know you can give us a blessing in an uh, A blessing. Blessing in an Okian language. I'm mm. not sure. I'm not sure what. There is. You don't. He's asking for t just to give like a blessing of goodwill and and and. Oh, I hope. Oh, I know. I'll do the one from the prisoner and uh, McGuin be seeing you <laughs> <laughs> all right that's okay thank How's you yeah <laughs> be seen get in can you give I'll, us a blessing in the back. language i'll be back sure How's that one i don't have and i'll be back get in we'll speak galactic now yeah and this is a tiara sikalarsha pingira kuram bedila tisha kahra Kanti Salomaya Uria, Tilarisiku, Tipashanda, Laria Pataka, Lo Ho, Imbaduria Shita, Ko Pa Sandia, La Refesita, Ko Binada, Badia Sha, Leo Kosompa, I Saloko, Lindo, Didarakafa, Leria, Ishalam, Biasa, Tia Chocolate, Eti, Combata, Yasi. How did the Bible put it? Amen. I believe. I'm in love. <laughs> <laughs> Are you capable of uh, speaking now? Can you give us uh, a blessing? Uh, yes, yes. Go ahead. I, I will do the Liran. Okay. Ah, Shahani, Ahutu, Numaha, Desan, Nita, Parina, Haliti, Hunui, Hanita, Hanushutu. Meha niruti hutu e panarisa noha i mani turu hati asha me. Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead. I, I, now I understand. 
how did they put it in little buddha so nice to see you again after so long a period and, uh, thank you absolutely anyone else I always try. No one ever likes to talk after me. I'm a tough act, but that's okay. Is <laughs> 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 there anyone else with a blessing? <laughs> nice talking to you all. You. I hope you have me back again. It's my pleasure. Of course. Thank you. You bet. <laughs> Rahamahanam, <laughs> Nice all right. Thank you all. Thank you, Rick. See Bye -bye. you very soon. All right. Bye. Thank you very much.